multiplication table of 2. Today we will learn what is a multiplication table and the importance of memorizing the tables. Riyansh, I brought laddus for you. Oh wow, but one laddu isn't good enough. You should have brought at least two laddus. Why don't you just open the box? Oh wow, this is one box. This is amazing. But why are you distributing laddus? My uncle has opened a sweet shop. He gave me 10 boxes of laddus to distribute to teachers and friends. 10 boxes? This means you have got a lot of laddus. Yes, lots of laddus. How many laddus in total? I can tell you only after I count them. Okay, let's count them. Where are they? In the class. Then let's go there. Now look, there are 10 boxes. Each box has 2 laddus. So let's count the laddus in the boxes. Okay, each box has 2 laddus. To know the laddus in 2 boxes, we have to add 2, 2 times. So the answer is 4, which means there are 4 laddus in 2 boxes. To know how many laddus are there in 3 boxes, we have to add 2, 3 times. After adding 2 3 times, the answer we get is 6. To know the number of laddus in 4 boxes, we have to add 2 4 times. After adding 2 4 times, the answer is 8. Riyansh and Vandana, what are you counting? Madam, there are 2 laddus in each these boxes. We are trying to find the total number of laddus in these boxes. That is very easy. Now, Vandana, tell me how many boxes of laddus are there? We have a total of 10 boxes. That means you have a total of 20 laddus. How could you find out so soon, madam? We have been counting for a very long time. It's easy. I have multiplied 2 with the number of boxes. So, I got to know that there are 20 laddus in 10 boxes. But why did you multiply? We are adding them together to find the total number of laddus. See Vandana, to know the number of laddus in 4 boxes, you have added 2 4 times. Instead of this, you can multiply 2 by 4. Multiplying 2 4 times means adding 2 4 times. That is why both answers are the same, which is 8. That means if you multiply 2 by 10, will the answer be the same if you add 2 10 times? Yes, Riyansh. In the same way, you can convert the above additions into multiplication. If you want to find the laddus in 3 boxes, multiply 2 by 3. Similarly, for 2 boxes, multiply 2 by 2. And to find the laddus in 1 box, multiply 2 by 1. That means we don't need to add them. No, for 5 to 10, you should try to find the result yourself and check. Then to find the laddus in 5 boxes, we will multiply 2 by 5. Here, number of laddus is 2 and number of boxes is 5. Then we can find that there will be 10 laddus in 5 boxes. Number of laddus in 6 boxes will be 2 multiplied by 6, that is 12. Number of laddus in 7 boxes will be 2 multiplied by 7, that is 14. Number of laddus in 8 boxes will be 2 multiplied by 8, that is 16. In 9 boxes, it will be 2 multiplied by 9, that is 18. And the number of laddus in 10 boxes will be 2 multiplied by 10, which comes to 20. It is easier to multiply two numbers than adding the same number again and again. Yes, that is why it is very important to memorize the tables. Otherwise, you have to use a pen and paper even for simple calculations. What are tables? The list obtained when you multiply a number by 1 to 10, it is called the multiplication table of that number. Just like 
you have multiplied 2 by 1 to 10 and obtained this list. This is the multiplication table of 2. Do we need to memorize it? Yes, because it will be very useful for you. Like me, you too will be able to calculate without using a pen and paper. We had also memorized it. And it is so much fun to memorize them because you can memorize them in the form of a song. We remember the table of 2 like this. 2 ones are 2. 2 twos are 4. 2 threes are 6. 2 fours are 8. 2 fives are 10. 2 six are 12. 2 sevens are 14. 2 eights are 16. 2 nines are 18. 2 tens are 20. Today we have learned that the list obtained when we multiply a number by 1 to 10, it is called the multiplication table of that number. And we can do calculations without a pen and paper if we memorize tables. Multiplication table of 3 Today we will learn the multiplication table of 3. Look, Rayanch, there are so many tires printed on this newspaper. This is definitely an advertisement of a tire. Maybe, but can you tell me which vehicle these tires belongs to? Yes, this is a bicycle tire. But it can also be tire of a rickshaw. Yes, it can also be tire of a rickshaw. If these are bicycle tires, can you tell me how many bicycles do they belong to? And if these are rickshaw tires, how many rickshaw do they belong to? Let me try. First, let's count these tires. There are 18 tires. If these are bicycle tires, can you tell me how many bicycles do they belong to? A bicycle has two tires. And there are a total of 18 tires. Two nines are 18. This means these tires belong to nine bicycles. Hey! How did you calculate it so fast? I remember the multiplication table of 2. That's how I could answer immediately. Remember what? The multiplication table of 2. What is a multiplication table? The list obtained when multiplying a number with 1 to 10 is called the multiplication table of that number. Like a multiplication table of 2 is 2 ones are 2, 2 twos are 4, 2 threes are 6, 2 fours are 8, 2 fives are 10, 2 six are 12, 2 sevens are 14, 2 eights are 16, 2 nines are 18, 2 tens are 20. Taking a look at this table, we can find that one bicycle has two tires. Two bicycles have four tires. Similarly, nine cycles will have 18 tires. Okay, you don't need a paper pen if you remember the multiplication table. Yes, we don't need paper pen. So now if we want to know how many rickshaws these tires belong to, we will use the multiplication table of three. Yes. Do you know the multiplication table of 3? No, but we can write the multiplication table of 3. For that, we will multiply 3 by numbers from 1 to 10. Let's write it down again. Yesterday, ma'am shared one more interesting information. That multiplying 3 by a number means adding 3 as many number of times. What do you mean? Look, if 3 is multiplied by 6, then the answer will be the same as adding 3 6 times. So, we can fill this table by adding 3, then it will become a multiplication table of 3. Yes, then we will memorize it. So, let's fill it. One rickshaw has 3 tires. And to find out how many tires 2 rickshaws have, we will add 3 to 3. Add 1, 2, 3, 1 more and 1 more. The answer will be 6. That means multiplying 2 by 3 would give the answer 6. Which means 6 is double of 3. 
Then after adding three to six, the answer will be nine. That means three threes are nine. You see, to write a multiplication table of three, we are writing every third number instead of adding again and again. If we read out every third number of these numbers, we get the multiplication table of three. Yes, it seems so. I will try. Right now we are at nine. Three numbers from nine is twelve. That means we write twelve in front of three times four. This makes three fours are twelve. So the next number will be fifteen, and the next eighteen. This means three fives are fifteen, and three six are eighteen. See, we got to know that there will be eighteen tires in six rickshaws. Yes, I got it. But now the multiplication of three is not complete. We can complete that. The third number after eighteen will be twenty-one. That is, three sevens are twenty-one. Twenty-four will be three numbers after twenty-one. That is, three eights are twenty-four. The third number after twenty-four is twenty-seven. That is, three nines are twenty-seven. And the third number after twenty-seven will be thirty. That is, three tens are thirty. We've wrote down the multiplication table of three. Now let's memorize it, so that we don't have to do these calculations. Yes, okay. Three times one equals three. Three times two equals six. Hey, what are you doing? I am learning the table. No, you can't memorize tables like this. It is memorized in the form of a song, like this. Three ones are three, three twos are six, three threes are nine, three fours are twelve, three fives are fifteen, three six are eighteen, three sevens are twenty-one, three eights are twenty-four, three nines are twenty-seven, three tens are thirty. This is very interesting. This way, anyone can remember the multiplication of three. Today, we've learned that the list that is formed by multiplying a number with one to ten is called the multiplication table of that number. And skip counting method can also be used to find the multiplication table of a number. Like what Vandana and Rayansh did by writing every third number starting with three. Multiplication table of four. Today we will learn the multiplication table of four. Neha, my younger sister's birthday is in a few days from now. Papa has asked me to find out how many number of tables and chairs will be required for all the guests to sit. I have identified the number of chairs, but I am not able to find out the number of tables needed. Why not? You can find out the number of tables in the same way you found out the number of chairs. It's not that simple. It is very easy to find out the number of chairs. There are a total of thirty-two guests coming, so the number of chairs also will be thirty-two. But a table will be used by many, and that is why I am puzzled. Okay, come on, I will help you. Just tell me the total number of guests. Thirty-two. And how many guests can use one table? Four. Each table is for four guests. To know how many guests will use two tables, you have to add four two times. For three table, you have to add four three times. That means you have to read the multiplication table of four. What does a table mean? The list you get when you multiply a number from one to ten is called a multiplication table. Multiplication table of four will be the sequence you get when you multiply four from one to ten. If I could remember the multiplication table of four, I could easily tell you the number of tables. Okay, 
यू डोंट नीड एनी पेन एंड पेपर इफ यू रिमेंबर द मल्टीप्लीकेशन टेबल येस यू डोंट नीड एनी पेन एंड पेपर वॉट शुड वी डू नाउ वी विल राइट द मल्टीप्लीकेशन टेबल बट हाउ डू वी राइट इट इट इज वेरी इजी कीप एडिंग फोर अगेन एंड अगेन और कीप लिविंग फोर नंबर एंड काउंट दैम आई डोंट अंडरस्टैंड लुक To know the first number in multiplication table of four, we will multiply four by one. For that, we have to add four only once. The answer will be four. If we add any number once, we get the same number. Yes, that's why two ones are two and three ones are three. Ones means. Ayushman, we sing to memorize the tables easily. That's why. Two times one equal to two is read as two ones are two, and three times one equals to three is read as three ones are three. Oh, that means four times one equals four is read as four ones are four. Now we got to know the first number in multiplication table of four. There are two ways to find the next number. Either add four two times, or Find the fourth number after four. Adding four two times gives us eight. Now we will find the fourth number after four. That is first, second, third, and fourth number is eight. The answer is the same in both ways. That is eight. That means four twos are eight. Yes. Now we write the multiplication table of four by either of two methods. Okay, we will find out. To find the answer for three times four, either add four three times, or find the fourth number after eight. The fourth number after eight is twelve, and if we add four three times. Then also the answer is twelve. This means four threes are twelve. Now to find out the next number, we will add four four times. Wait, Neha, I don't think we need to add four four times. Then how do we find out what four times four is? Look, to find out four times three, we have added four three times. Whose answer is twelve. Now, by adding four to twelve, we can find out how much do we get if we add four four times. Okay. Instead of adding four four times, we will add four to twelve. And the answer will be sixteen. That is, four fours are sixteen. That means we can find the next number in the multiplication table of four by adding four to sixteen. Which will be twenty. In the same way, we can find the next number by adding four to twenty. That is twenty-four. This way, we will continue to add, and we will find out the next number. Now we get to know the whole multiplication table of four. But my problem hasn't been resolved. How many tables are needed for thirty-two guests? Hey, we already know it. Look. Thirty-two comes in the multiplication table of four when we multiply four by eight. That means you need eight tables. Oh yes, from this multiplication table, we can say that eight tables can be used by thirty-two guests. Yes. Now let's memorize this multiplication table of four in the sing-song manner. Four ones are four. Four twos are eight. Four threes are twelve. Four fours are sixteen. Four fives are twenty. Four six are twenty-four. Four sevens are twenty-eight. Four eights are thirty-two. Four nines are thirty-six. Four tens are forty. This is fun. This way we can easily remember the multiplication table of four. Today you have learned that. The list formed by multiplying a number from one to ten is called the multiplication table of that number. 
and to find the multiplication table of any number write the number first and keep on adding the same number for example to find the multiplication table of 4 write 4 first and add 4 to it add 4 again to the result keep doing this till you get the whole multiplication table <laughs> Multiplication table of 5 Today we will learn multiplication table of 5 and how to find the multiplication table of large numbers by using the multiplication table of small numbers. 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, What are you counting 40. Vandana? I am counting the minutes in the clock. You interrupted me and now I've forgotten. I was finding out how many minutes have passed. How are you counting the minutes? Look at the numbers on the clock. The small marking in between them. Tell the minutes. These have to be counted to find out the minutes. Hey Vandana, you don't need to count. Then how will we find out how many minutes have passed? I use the multiplication table of 5. What is the relation between counting minutes and multiplication table of 5? There is a direct relation. See the difference between all these numbers is 5. And the difference between the numbers in the multiplication table of 5 is also 5. If it is so easy, why don't you tell how many minutes is it showing in the clock? Look. The minute hand on the 10 right now, this means it is 50 minutes. How? Look at the multiplication table of 5. 5 times 10 is 50. In the multiplication table of 5, 5 multiplies by 10 is 50. I also know the multiplication table of 5, but I never thought that it can be used to find the minutes. Now you can also use the multiplication table of 5 like me to see the minutes. You do not have to count the minutes one by one. Yes, I will do this now. But how did you write the multiplication table of 5? The multiplication table of 4 is written by adding 4 repeatedly. In the same way, multiplication table of 5 is written by adding 5 repeatedly. But I use the multiplication tables of 2 and 3 to write the table of 5. How do you write the multiplication table of 5 with the help of tables of 2 and 3? Let me show you how to write the multiplication table of 5 using tables of 2 and 3. Show. Sure. Look, this is the multiplication table of 2 and this is the multiplication table of 3. Now I will write the table of 5 using these. Wait, first I will write the multiplication table of 5 as well. It will be easy to check if you are writing it correctly or not. See, 2 multiplied by 1 is 2 and 3 multiplied by 1 is 3. Add 2 and 3, the answer is 5. So, we write 5 multiplied by 1 is 5. I don't think we can find the next number similarly. We can find it exactly like this. Look. 2 multiplied by 2 is 4 and 3 multiplied by 2 is 6. If 4 and 6 are added, the answer will be 10. This means that 5 multiplied by 2 will be 10. Tell me, isn't it right? Oh wow! Then we can find the third number in the multiplication table of 5 by adding the third numbers 6 and 9 in the multiplication tables of 2 and 3 which will be 15. In this way, we can find the complete multiplication table of 5 by adding the numbers from the multiplication tables of 2 and 3. Now I have understood. To find out the multiplication table of large numbers, we can use the multiplication tables of smaller numbers. Yes, I have also understood. Now I will try to memorize the multiplication table of 5 by reciting it. 5 ones are 5. 5 2 is 10. 5, 3 is 15. 5, 4 is 20. 5, 5 is 25. 5, 6 is 30. 
फाइव सेवन इज थर्टी फाइव फाइव एट इज फोर्टी फाइव नाइन इज फोर्टी फाइव फाइव टेन इज फिफ्टी जेस नाउ लुक एट द क्लॉक वेन द मिनिट हैंड इज एट सिक्स रीडिंग द मल्टीप्लीकेशन टेबल ऑफ फाइव टिल सिक्स विल टेल दैट इट इज थर्टी मिनट्स एंड वेन इट्स ऑन नाइन इट विल बी फोर्टी फाइव मिनट्स Yes, this is the right way to read time. Today we have learned multiplication table of five, and also got to know that to find the multiplication table of large numbers, you can use the multiplication table of small numbers. Like Vandana used the multiplication tables of three and two to find out the multiplication table of five. Multiplication table of six. Today we will learn multiplication table of six. Chagu Halwai makes very good samosas. Vandana is going to get samosas from Chagu Halwai's shop. Uncle, can you give me eight samosas? Chagu gave Vandana eight samosas in a packet. Take this Vandana, eight samosas. Thank you, Uncle. How much should I pay? One samosa is for six rupees. At the rate of six rupees per samosa, calculate and give the money for eight samosas. Vandana is trying to find out what is the cost of eight samosas if one samosa cost six rupees. Will you help Vandana in finding out the total cost of eight samosas? One samosa costs six rupees. To find the cost of eight samosas, let me add six rupees eight times. Vandana is adding six rupees eight times. Do you know of a better method? Multiplying six by eight is better than adding six repeatedly eight times. Vandana has understood. how to calculate the cost of eight samosas quickly but there is a problem i do not know the table of six if i had known the table of six i could have immediately calculated the cost of eight samosas what happened vandana are you having any trouble uncle i do not know the table of six eh hey, so what do you know the multiplication table of 3 yes i know the multiplication table of 3 then you can easily find out the multiplication table of 6 from the multiplication table of 3 how can i find out the table of 6 from the table of 3 see this is the multiplication table of 3 if you multiply 2 with the first answer in the table of 3 the answer will be Six, which will be the first answer in the table of six. Similarly, multiplying the answers from the table of three with two will give the complete multiplication table of six. By this method, you find out the table of six and calculate the amount to be paid for eight samosas. Wow, Chagu uncle, this method is very good. Now I will find out the cost of eight samosas. You can also help Vandana find the table of six from the table of three. To find the multiplication table of six, multiply two with the answer of the multiplication table of three. Three times two is six, so six multiplied by two, that is six times two, will be twelve. This is very easy. Three times three is nine, so six multiplied by three will be nine times two, that is eighteen. Now I can find out the table of six in this manner. You can also find out the multiplication table of six like this. We have already written down the table of six. Now we can find out what is the cost of eight samosas. That will be six times eight. Which is forty-eight rupees. Now I will give forty-eight rupees to Chagu Uncle. 
Vandana has figured out that eight samosas will be for forty-eight rupees at the rate of six rupees per samosa. Do you think Vandana's answer is correct? Here it is, Uncle. Forty-eight rupees. Oh wow, Vandana! You have calculated the amount correctly. Now that you have written the table of six, remember it well. You will be able to solve the question without paper and pen from now on. You are talking like a school teacher, Chagu Uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chagu Uncle, for samosas and the multiplication table of six. Now I should go home quickly. Seeing these samosas, my mouth is watering. Come. Let's remember the table of six now. Come on, speak with me. Six ones are six. Six twos are twelve. Six threes are eighteen. Six fours are twenty-four. Six fives are thirty. Six six are thirty-six. Six sevens are forty-two. Six eights are forty-eight. Six nines are fifty-four. Six tens are sixty. Today you learned the multiplication table of six, and you also learned that multiplication tables of bigger numbers can be found out from multiplication tables of smaller numbers. Just like Vandana figured out the multiplication table of six from the multiplication table of three, you can try to find the multiplication table of six from the multiplication table of two. Multiplication table of seven. Today we will learn the multiplication table of seven. Today is Sunday, and Aishman is very happy because every Sunday he goes for an outing with his parents. Papa and Aishman are ready to go out, and are waiting for mummy. By the time mummy gets ready. Papa thinks of teaching something new to Aishman. He asks Aishman, "What is the date today?" Aishman waits the whole week for Sunday, so it is easy for him to remember that today the date is seventh and the day is Sunday. Aishman's father asks one more question: If today the date is seventh. And the day Sunday, which will be the date on next Sunday, this can be answered immediately by looking at the calendar. Thinking this, Aishman gets up to bring the calendar, but Papa wants Aishman to tell next Sunday's date without looking at the calendar. Can you help Aishman get the answer? Aishman knows that there are seven days. In a week, so if seven is added to today's date, seventh, then next Sunday's date will be easily known. If we add seven to date seventh, the answer will be fourteen. Aishman has found out that next Sunday the date will be fourteenth. Papa complimented Aishman. And further asked, what date would it be on the following Sunday after fourteenth? Aishman has understood how to find the answer. He has to add seven to fourteen. For this, he again picks up paper and pen. But Papa stops him. He wants Aishman to answer this question without paper and pen. Can you help Aishman? Aishman has understood that just like he added 7 to the date 7 to find the date of next sunday 14th similarly by adding 7 to 14 he will get the date of the following sunday suddenly aishman remembered that he had done such a calculation earlier too do you remember where we did this kind of calculation first 
you are absolutely right. We have done this kind of calculation while learning multiplication tables. So is this also a table? Oh yes, this is the multiplication table of 7. Its first number is 7. We added 7 to it and got the next number. By further adding 7 to it, we will find the subsequent number. I wish I could remember the table of 7. I would have been able to tell next Sunday's date without the help of paper and pen. Ayushman is thinking. Papa asked why he was unable to answer. Ayushman explained that the first Sunday is 7 multiplied by 1, that is 7th. The second Sunday is 7 multiplied by 2, that is 14th. So the third Sunday's date will be 7 multiplied by 3. But I do not know the multiplication table of 7. So without paper and pen, I cannot answer this question. Papa understood Ayushman's problem and asked him if he knows the multiplication table of 3. Ayushman tells Papa that he knows the multiplication table of 3. Then you can easily find what 7 multiplied by 3 is, Papa said to Ayushman. Ayushman started thinking, if I know the multiplication table of 3, how can I find the answer to 7 multiplied by 3? Papa told Ayushman that the answer to 7 multiplied by 3 would be the same as 3 multiplied by 7. Ayushman is even more confused now about how this was possible. Papa explained to Ayushman that if he makes 7 groups of 3 tomatoes each, then to find the total number of tomatoes, he can multiply 3 by 7 and find that there are 21 tomatoes. If we put these 21 tomatoes in 3 equal groups, then there will be 7 tomatoes in each group. Now observe that the number of tomatoes are still 21, but there are 7 tomatoes in one group and the total number of groups are 3. This means that whether 3 is multiplied by 7 or 7 is multiplied by 3, the answer will be 21. Ayushman understood how he could find 7 multiplied by 3 from a multiplication table of 3. If 3 multiplied by 7 is 21, then 7 multiplied by 3 will also be 21. This means that the date on the following Sunday after the 14th will be 21st. Ayushman gave the exact date of Sunday without paper and pen. Papa is now confident that Ayushman will be able to tell the date of the Sunday after 21st without paper and pen. Can you tell what the date will be on the following Sunday after 21st? Pause this video for a while and try to find out. To find the date of the Sunday after 21st, Ayushman has to find the next number in the multiplication table of 7, that is 7 multiplied by 4. Ayushman does not know the multiplication table of 7, but he knows the multiplication table of 4. 4 multiplied 7 is 28. So this means 7 multiplied by 4 will also be 28. This means that the Sunday after 21st will be on 28th. Now Ayushman knows that he will be going out on dates 7th, 14th, 21st and 28th of this month. Hey, Mummy is also ready. Now Ayushman, Papa and Mummy are going to go out. But we will write the complete multiplication table of 7 and memorize it. So, how much is 7 multiplied by 5? You are absolutely right that 7 multiplied by 5 would be the same as 5 multiplied by 7, which is 35. The next number in the multiplication table of 7 is 7 multiplied by 6, which is same as 6 multiplied 7, which is 42.
Now let's find out 7 multiplied by 7. But we don't know the multiplication table of 7. No problem. We will find the complete multiplication table of 7 using the old method of number line, in which we see that the 7th number after 42 is 49. 7 multiplied by 8 will be the 7th number after 49, that is 56. 7 multiplied by 9 will be the 7th number after 56, that is 63. And to know 7 multiplied by 10, we will find the 7th number after 63, which is 70. Now, you have written the complete table of 7. Let's memorize it by singing. 7 ones are 7, 7 twos are 14, 7 threes are 21, 7 fours are 28, 7 fives are 35, 7 six are 42, 7 sevens are 49, 7 eights are 56, 7 nines are 63, 7 tens are 70. Today you learned that whether you multiply 7 by 3 or 3 by 7, the answer will be 21. That means when two numbers have to be multiplied, they can be written in any order. The answer will be the same. We also learned the multiplication table of 7. Now write 7's multiplication table and memorize it by singing. Multiplication table of 8 Today we will learn multiplication table of 8. Diwali is approaching. Hence, everyone in Vandana's house is busy cleaning. Vandana's mother has taken out all the old newspapers to sell them to the scrap dealer, Ragman. Each bundle that Vandana's mother has tied has one month's newspaper. Vandana's attention is repeatedly going towards the bundles of newspaper lying on the floor because whenever the newspapers are sold, Vandana gets to keep that money. She is waiting for Ragman. That is when the voice of the scrap dealer is heard. Scrap dealer! Scrap dealer! Vandana was waiting for this very moment. She rushes off and brings the scrap dealer to her house. We want to sell all these newspapers. Vandana's father stays back to help Vandana sell newspapers while her mother goes inside the house to fetch more scrap. The scrap dealer puts one bundle of newspaper on the weighing scale. Let's see what is the price of one bundle of newspaper. One bundle of newspaper weighs 8 kilograms. Now let's weigh the remaining bundle as well. Vandana wants to weigh all the bundles. But the scrap dealer tells her that not all bundles need to be weighed. Each bundle would weigh the same 8 kilos. There are 8 bundles of newspapers in total. If one bundle is of 8 kilos, can you tell us how many kilos of newspapers are there? To find out how many kilograms of newspaper are there, we add the weight of all the newspapers. That is, let's add 8 times 8. This way, 8 has to be added 8 times. Can you suggest an easy way to solve this? Adding 8 times 8 will give us the same answer as multiplying 8 by 8. But to solve this, I should know the multiplication table of 8. I don't know the table of 8. Do you know the multiplication table of 8? Vandana doesn't know the multiplication table of 8. But she knows an easy trick through which we can find out the multiplication table of 8. Can you tell us an easy way to find the multiplication table of 8? I can find the table of 8 with the help of multiplication tables of 3 and 5. 
when we add the first number of multiplication tables of 3 and 5 we get 8 which is the first number of multiplication table of 8 similarly we can find the second number of the multiplication table of 8 by adding the second number of the multiplication table of 3 which is 6 and the second number of the multiplication table of 5 which is 10 now when we add 6 and 10 we get 16 that would mean 2 times 8 is 16 now to find the answer of 3 times 8 let's add 9 and 15 answer is 24 in the same way by adding all the numbers of 3 and 5 multiplication tables one by one i can find entire multiplication table of 8 vandana has understood how to find the multiplication table of 8 did you think of the same method? Vandana is trying to find the table of 8 with the help of multiplication tables of 3 and 5. Can you find the table of 8 from any multiplication table besides these? Just like adding 3 and 5 gave us the number 8, similarly, you have to find two small numbers which add up to 8. See, for example, Adding 3 and 5, the answer is 8. We can do this by adding 2 and 6 also, which will give us the answer 8. This means that you can find the table of 8 by adding the numbers of multiplication tables of 2 and 6. Pause the video and write down the full table of 8. Vandana has calculated till 7 times 8 in the table of 8. Let's see how she'll find out the next number in the table that is 8 times 8. To find 8 times 8, we have to add the numbers 8 times 3 and 8 times 5. When we add 24 and 40, we get 64. To find the answer of 9 times 8, we add 27 and 45. The answer will be 72. Now we have to find out the last number of the multiplication table of 8. For that we will add 30 and 50. The answer will be 80. Vandana has written down the entire multiplication table of 8. You can check whether the table you wrote is the same or not. Now with the help of this table, Vandana can calculate the weight of 8 bundles of newspapers where each bundle weighs 8 kilograms. The answer will be 8 multiplied by 8, that is 64 kilograms. This means that these 8 bundles weighted 64 kilos. Vandana's father is happy because Vandana was able to do the calculation accurately without using pen and paper. And Vandana is also happy because now she will get the money from which she will buy a beautiful doll for herself. If a scrap dealer pays 9 rupees to Vandana for 1 kilogram of newspaper, can you tell me how much will Vandana get for selling 64 kilos of newspaper? We will learn to solve such questions in the next video. Let's memorize the table of 8 for now. See, Vandana has even started singing. Eight ones are eight. Eight twos are sixteen. Eight threes are twenty-four. Eight fours are thirty-two. Eight fives are forty. Eight six are forty-eight. Eight sevens are fifty-six. Eight eights are sixty-four. Eight nines are seventy-two. Eight tens are eighty. Today we have learned multiplication table of 8 and how useful are the multiplication tables in our daily life. <music> multiplication table of 9 Today we will learn multiplication table of 9. Vandana's father drives his motorbike for 9 kilometers to go to his office and come back. Today they are calculating how many kilometers does Papa ride the motorcycle in 10 days. But why are they doing this? Papa, 
Why do you want to know this? Because I have to fill the petrol in the motorcycle every tenth day. I want to find out how many kilometers I ride the motorcycle after filling the petrol. Vandana feels that she can help Papa in calculating this. Papa, let me find out and tell you how many kilometers you ride the motorcycle in ten days. Okay, Vandana, help me out. Vandana has to ask some questions before calculating. Papa, how many kilometers do you drive in a day? I use my motorcycle only for commuting to and from the office, and I have to ride nine kilometers in the motorcycle to get to and from the office. Okay, now I can tell you the answer to this question. You help me, please. How many kilometers father rides the motorcycle in ten days? If it was nine kilometers per day, to find this out, I have to multiply nine by ten. For this, I should start with the multiplication of nine. To write the table of nine, I add the numbers of the small tables. For that, let me first find out which numbers add up to form nine. Come on, let's do that. Can you help Vandana? Pause the video for a while and you write a set of two numbers on your notebook which adds up to 9. I have found out. Adding 7 to 2, adding 6 to 3, adding 4 and 5, we get 9. Vandana knows that 9 comes from groups of these two numbers. Vandana can choose any one of these groups. She chooses the table of 2 and 7. Let me now find the table of 9 from the table of 2 and 7. For this, let me write the tables of 2 and 7 first. Now, by adding their numbers, we find the multiplication table of 9. By adding 2 and 7, the answer will be 9. By adding 4 and 14, we get 18. After adding 6 and 21, we get 27. Vandana has found out the initial three answers of the table of 9. You can stop this video and try to find the next three numbers. Now let us see how Vandana finds out the next three numbers. Now to find out 4 times 9, I add this fourth numbers of both the tables 8 and 28. The answer is 36. Similarly, to know the next number, add 10 and 35. The answer is 45. And to find the next number, we add 12 more to 42. The answer came as 54. Vandana wants to write the rest of the four numbers of the table 9 in a similar way. Now to find out 7 times 9, let's add the 7th number of the table of 2 and 7, 14 and 49. Answer is 63. If we add 16 and 56 to find 8 times 9, then the answer would be 72. To find 9 times 9, we will add 18 and 63. The answer is 81. Now let's add 20 and 70 to find the last number which is 90. Vandana has written the entire table of 9. Now she can tell Papa how many kilometers her father drives the motorcycle in 10 days if he rides it for 9 kilometers per day. Can you answer this question by looking at the table of 9? You are absolutely right. For this, we have to find the answer of 10 times 9. And looking at this table, we can tell that the answer of 10 times 9 is 90. That in 10 days, her father rides his motorcycle for 90 kilometers if he rides 9 kilometers every day. Let's tell Papa. Papa, you ride 90 kilometers in 10 days. Oh, wow! You said exactly right. But how did you find out? 
First, I wrote a table of two small numbers, two and seven, from which I found the table of nine. And then I found out the answer to this question. Oh, wow, Vandana, you have become very intelligent. But do you know, apart from two and seven, you can find the nines table with three and six. See, like adding two and seven gives the answer nine. Similarly, Adding 3 and 6 gives the answer 9. Children, can you try writing the table of 9 from 3 and 6? Now learn the table of 9 so that you do not have to write it again and again. Let us learn by singing the multiplication table of 9. 9 ones are 9, 9 twos are 18, 9 threes are 27, 9 fours are 36, 9 fives are 45, 9 six are 54, 9 sevens are 63, 9 eights are 72, 9 nines are 81, 9 tens are 90. Today we learned multiplication table of 9 and together we also learned a table of two small numbers can be used to create the table of a large number. For example, Vandana used the tables of 2 and 7 to find the table of 9. Multiplication table of 10 Today we will learn multiplication table of 10. New plants will be planted in Vandana and Ayushman school. All new plants that have been purchased are kept in one place. Vandana and Ayushman come to school and see all the plants kept together. Vandana, look! So many plants are kept here. Not so many, Ayushman. They are in total 100 plants. How did you count so fast, Vandana? It's very easy. Tell me. How many plants are there in a row? Ten. Now tell me how many rows of plants are there? Ten. So to find out how many plants are there, we will add ten times ten. Or else we will multiply ten by ten. To know this, we use multiplication table of ten. Ten times ten is hundred. So I said that a total of hundred plants are kept here. How did you learn the multiplication table of 10? In the same way as we wrote the multiplication table of 9 by adding the numbers of two small tables. Similarly, I found the multiplication table of 10 by adding the number of two small tables. If you want, you can also find the table of 10 from two small tables. Okay, I will use two small number tables to write the multiplication table of 10. For that, first I will have to find out which two numbers add up to 10. You can also help me find out. Adding 2 and 8 gives us the answer 10. Adding 3 and 7 also gives us the answer 10. Similarly, Adding 4 and 6 also gives us the answer 10. Now we can use any one of these three groups or sets to find the multiplication table of 10. So which of these numbers you will use Ayushman? I will find the multiplication table of 10 from the multiplication tables of 4 and 6. Because both these numbers are neither very small nor very big. Okay. Now you find the multiplication table of 10. The first number of the multiplication table of 4 is 4. And the first number of the multiplication table of 6 is 6. Adding 4 and 6 gives us the answer 10. This becomes the first number of multiplication table of 10. To find the second number, we will have to add 8 and 12. Answer is 20. That means 2 times 10 is 20. To find the third number of the multiplication table of 10, we will add 12 and 18. The answer will be 30. 
टू नो द वैल्यू ऑफ फोर टाइम्स टेन वी एड सिक्सटीन एंड ट्वेंटी फोर द आंसर इज फोर्टी टू फाइंड फाइव टाइम्स टेन वी विल हैव टू एड ट्वेंटी एंड थर्टी सो फाइव टाइम्स टेन इज फिफ्टी You have already found half of the multiplication table of ten. Now you can find the rest of the table in the same way. I will find out remaining part of the multiplication table of ten. You can also pause the video and complete the table of ten yourself. Let's see if you can write the entire table correctly. Now to find the sixth number of the multiplication table of ten, I will add twenty-four and thirty-six. The answer is. Sixty. It means six times ten is sixty. To find the seventh number of the multiplication table of ten, we will add the seventh number of the multiplication table of four, that is twenty-eight, and the seventh number of the multiplication table of six, that is forty-two. The answer is seventy. It means seven times ten is seventy. Now only three numbers are left. Yes. To find the eighth number of the multiplication table of ten, we will add thirty-two and forty-eight. Answer is eighty. To find the ninth number of the multiplication table of ten, we will add thirty-six and fifty-four. The answer is ninety. And to find the tenth number of the multiplication table of ten, we will add forty and sixty. The answer is hundred. Ayushman had written down the entire multiplication table of ten. Have you written the same thing? Vandana knows another easy way to find the multiplication table of ten. She is telling Ayushman about it. Ayushman, I know another way to find the multiplication table of ten. Okay, then tell me. If we add ten to the first number ten of the multiplication table of ten, we will get the second number of the multiplication table of ten, that is twenty. And so, if we keep adding ten to the numbers, we can know the multiplication table of ten. Yes, I know this method as well. I found some of the multiplication tables using this method. Yes, but it is easier to find the multiplication table of ten because when we write the number from one to a hundred, this is the first number of the multiplication table of ten. When we add ten to this number, we get twenty, which is the second number of the table of ten. And again, when we add ten to the second number twenty, we get thirty, which is the third number of table of ten. Similarly, all these numbers below are the numbers of the table of ten. Oh yes this is exactly what i wrote now since you know the entire multiplication table of 10 you can immediately tell that they are a total of 100 plants yes that's the benefit of multiplication tables without the use of paper pen you can solve some questions easily let me memorize by singing the multiplication table of 10 1 10s are 10 2 10s are 20 Three tens are thirty, four tens are forty, five tens are fifty, six tens are sixty, seven tens are seventy, eight tens are eighty, nine tens are ninety, ten tens are hundred. Today we have learned multiplication table of ten, and we also came to know that with the help of small tables, we can write the tables for large numbers. Interesting facts about multiplication tables. Today we will learn some interesting facts about multiplication tables. Rayansh and Vandana are in the school park and discussing about multiplication tables. Yesterday I learnt about a few interesting facts about tables on the internet. Interesting facts? Tell me too, Rayansh. Okay. At first, I will tell you interesting facts about multiplication table of nine. Okay please tell me This is the table of 
The next number in the series is 18. If we add both the digits of the number 1 and 8, the answer is 9. Similarly, if we add the digits of any other number from the multiplication table of 9, the answer will be 9. Really? I don't believe it. I will do it myself. Third number in the table of 9 is 27. If we add the digits 2 and 7 of it, we get the answer 9. Fourth number is 36. And adding both 3 and 6, we will also get the answer 9. Fifth number is 45. On adding the digits 4 and 5, the answer is also 9. Sixth number is 54. And now if we add 5 and 4, the answer is again 9. Now I will see the seventh number in the table of 9 that is 63. Adding the digits 6 and 3, the answer again is 9. Wow! This is interesting! When we add all the digits in the multiplication table of 9, the answer is 9. Do you also know some other interesting things about other tables too, Rayansh? Look, these are tables from 1 to 10. Look, if the number line is read from left to right, it shows a special table. The first line shows the table of 1, second shows that of 2 and the third of 3. So, whichever line you read from left to right becomes the table of the number. And reading the lines top to bottom also gives the table of a number. Oh yes! This is an amazing pattern. Like the first line from left to right is table for 1. So is the first line from top to bottom. Similarly, the seventh line from left to right is the table of 7. And so is the seventh line from top to bottom. There must be many, many such interesting patterns, right? So, Rayansh, do you know more of them? Please tell me. I don't know about any other pattern. Come, let's ask ma'am. Okay, let's go. We learned about interesting patterns in tables. Multiplication Table of 1 Today we will learn Table of 1. Rayansh and Vandana are at the school park and discussing about multiplication tables. Rayansh, I have studied multiplication tables from 2 to 10 and learned them by heart too. How much have you learned? Besides 2 to 10, I know the multiplication table of 1. Table of 1? There is table of 1 as well? I don't know about it. There is a table of 1 as well. And it is the easiest one. If we add 1 to any number on the number line, we get its succeeding number. This is the number line. And I will read out the table of 1. One ones are one, one twos are two, one threes are three, one fours are four, one fives are five, one sixes are six, one sevens are seven, one eights are eight, one nines are nine, one tens are ten. Oh, this means that table of one is counting from one to ten. Today, we learned about the multiplication table of 1. Interesting Division Problems Part 1 Today, we will learn how to solve division problems related to real or daily life. 
Today, Mummy has brought a packet of pencils for Vandana and her brother. In this packet, there are 10 pencils. Vandana has to keep half of these pencils with her and give half of them to her brother. But Vandana does not understand how she should distribute these pencils equally between two people. Can you help Vandana? Pause this video for a while and tell how many pencils Vandana will get and how many pencils will Vandana's brother get. Vandana has got an idea to divide the pencils equally into two parts. Let's see what she does. First, I keep one pencil for me, then one for my brother, again one for me and then one for my brother. In this way, I keep a pencil for me and a pencil for brother until all the pencils are divided. Now, I also have five pencils and my brother also has five pencils. Vandana has divided the pencils into two equal parts. Did you find this method correct? Mummy sees Vandana distributing pencils like this and tells Vandana, Hey Vandana, you know multiplication tables, then why distribute the pencils like this? What is the relationship between multiplication tables to this? I will explain. See, you had to divide 10 pencils into two equal parts, so you can use division for it. How? We have to divide 10 pencils between two people. Or we can also say that if we want to divide 10 items into two equal parts, then we will write it like this, 10 divided by 2. That is, we will divide 10 into two equal parts. Then the answer will be the number of pencils a person gets. Do you know how to divide it? Let's see you do this. Okay, mummy, I will divide 10 by 2, okay? Vandana is dividing 10 by 2. You too should help Vandana. To divide by 2, I should make use of the tables. Now I understand why my mother was saying that I can use multiplication tables. Now I will study a multiplication table till it becomes 10. 2 ones are 2, 2 twos are 4, 2 threes are 6. Two fours are eight. Two fives are ten. Two fives are ten. That is, two times five is ten. The answer is five when ten is divided by two. Let's tell mummy. Mummy, answer was five when I divided ten by two. Vandana, when 10 is divided by two, if the answer is five, it means that dividing 10 pencils into two parts will bring 5 pencils in each part. Well, now I understand. Even when I equally distributed the pencil one by one, there were 5 pencils on my brother and my part. But I did not need to do that. I can know immediately by dividing that both will have 5 pencils. Vandana has understood that she can divide and distribute things. But she still does not understand one thing. Mummy, when you can equally distribute the pencils one by one, then what is the need to divide it? For that, I will ask you a question. If you have 45 pencils and you are asked to divide them into 9 parts, which method will be easier? Method by equally distributing the pencils. Or else, dividing 45 by 9, tell me. So tell us, what do you think is the best way? I remember the multiplication table of 9. The 9 fives are 45. This means that if among 9 people 45 pencils are to be divided, then everybody will get 5 pencils. This means the division method is easier. So now, Vandana, do you understand why we use division? And how the tables help us in division? Yes, mother. Now I will learn the multiplication tables with greater attention. Today you learned about 
how the division is used in distribution and to divide it is necessary to remember multiplication tables interesting division problems part 2 Today we will learn how to solve problems in daily life using division. Today there is a party at Vandana's house and for that some guests are going to come to Vandana's house. Laddus are to be given to the guests on the way back. Papa brought the laddus from the market for the guests but forgot to bring the boxes to keep them. Mummy asks Vandana to bring boxes from the market to keep the laddus. Vandana asks her this. Mummy, how many boxes should I get? Mummy does not know how many boxes are needed. She only knows that four laddus are to be kept in one box. She asks Vandana to count the laddus and bring that many number of boxes in which all the laddus can be kept when four laddus are kept in one box now vandana has to find out that if four laddus are kept in one box then how many boxes are needed to keep 36 laddus vandana looks at the laddus vandana has come up with an idea that she can find out in how many boxes these laddus will fit I know this that four laddus will come in a box. I try to make groups of four laddus. The more groups I make, the more boxes I have to bring from the market. You to help me divide the laddus into groups, okay? I put these four laddus in a group. Out of the remaining laddus, let me put four laddus in the next group. In the same way, I make groups of four from the remaining laddus. Now I count these groups. There are nine total groups. That means I have to buy nine boxes. That's when Mummy comes from inside. She thought that Vandana must have brought the box by now, but Vandana is still standing here. Hey Vandana, why are you still standing here? Yes, mummy, I am leaving now. Till now, I was figuring out how many boxes I have to buy to keep thirty-six laddus. Oh, that is very easy. If four laddus come in a box, then nine boxes are needed for thirty-six laddus. Mummy, how did you find the answer so quickly? It took me so long to do it. I used division and found out. How did you do it? I put the laddus in groups of four and then counted the number of groups. But how did you divide it? It's very easy. We have total laddus of thirty-six, and we know that four laddus will come in every box. Then divide thirty-six by four. When you divide thirty-six by four, the answer will be the same number. I will divide and see. Do you know that to use division you should know multiplication tables? Yes, mummy, I know that. Okay then, you should divide and see. I have to divide 36 by 4. So I have to read a multiplication table of 4. 4 ones are 4. 4 twos are 8. 4 threes are 12. 4 fours are 16. 4 fives are 20. Four sixes are twenty-four. Four sevens are twenty-eight. Four eights are thirty-two. Four nines are thirty-six. Four nines are thirty-six. That is, if thirty-six is divided by four, the answer will come nine. That means I have to bring nine boxes. Oh wow! That was easy, and I worked so hard to divide the laddus into groups. Never mind, Vandana. Now you should remember this simple way. 
Last time we learnt that when we are given the number of parts and have to find out the number of items in them, we use division. Today we learnt that when we know how many things will come in one part, we still use division. Yes, now go quickly. The laddus are to be packed before the guests arrive. Today you learned that even when things have to be divided into small groups, division can be useful. Just as you saw Vandana dividing 36 laddus into groups of four. Interesting Division Problems Part 3 Today we will learn how to solve problems in real life using division. Today, Mummy has given 126 rupees as pocket money to Vandana and asked in how many days she will be able to spend this money. From my school canteen, I buy one kachori each for 7 rupees. So, like this, every day I spend 7 rupees. Vandana now has to find out in how many days she will be able to spend 126 rupees by spending 7 rupees per day. Can you help Vandana find this out? Let's see how Vandana solved this problem. To solve this question, I have come up with a technique. I will write 126 on a number line. And now if I minus 7 from 126, I got to know that after one day, I will be left with 119 rupees. Now I will subtract 7 from 119. The answer is 112. By this I get to know that after two days, I will be left with only 112 rupees. Likewise, I will keep subtracting 7 on this number line till I don't reach the figure 0. So once I reach the digit 0, that will mean all my pocket money is spent. Now I just want to see how many times 7 had to be reduced to reach 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Now I will tell mummy. Mummy, 126 rupees will be spent in 18 days. Vandana, I saw that you found the answer to this question by subtracting 7 again and again. But you can also use division rather than instead of subtracting the number in this way. But mummy, how can we use division? Division is used when we want to divide things into equal parts, right? Absolutely correct, Vandana. And even in this question, you are distributing 126 rupees in equal parts of 7 rupees. You also look at this question. Do you think mummy is correct? Oh yes, you are right, mummy. I did not notice that. Now that you know, try solving this question using division 2. Yes, mummy, I will do it. But I remember the table of 7 only till 10. And the 7 tens are 70. 126 is greater than 70. So how do I divide then? Even if a number is greater than 70, you can still divide it. Look, I will show how to divide. 7 ones are 7. Left 5, right? Let's write down 6. So it's 56. There are 7 eights are 56. Remainder 0. The answer is 18. This means that you spend 7 rupees per day. Then you will spend 126 rupees in 18 days. Do you see Vandana? Even after dividing, the answer is the same as it was during repeated subtraction. Yes, mummy. Now I understand that division can be used instead of subtracting the same number repeatedly. 
Yes, Vandana. Now you've understood it completely. Today we learned that the division can be used in place of subtraction when the items are to be divided evenly. Interesting division problems. Part 4. Today we will learn how to divide large numbers. Today, Mummy has brought a new school bag for Vandana. Vandana is very happy to see her new bag. She asks her mother, Mom, how much did this bag cost? It cost 459 rupees. Look, there also is a tag on it. Vandana sees the tag in the bag. It has 459 written on it. Vandana is finding it very expensive. Mom, this is very expensive. Yes, it is expensive. But I liked it, so I bought it. What was the cost of my old bag? The cost of this bag is equal to your three old bags. Now, you can find the cost of the old bag yourself. Got it. If three bags cost 459 rupees, so to find out how much a bag is worth, I divide 459 by 3. Right, mummy? Perfect, Vandana. Now quickly find out and tell me the cost of your old bag. Can you do that for me? To divide 459 by 3, I first write it like this. But how will I divide such a large number by 3? I do not know. Vandana does not know how to divide big numbers. So, she asks her mother. Mummy, teach me to divide big numbers, please. Okay, Vandana. It is easy to divide big numbers, okay? See, when you have to divide big numbers, then don't divide the whole number together. Just divide it digit by digit. Like, we will not divide this whole number, but instead we will divide the first digit 4 by 3. Okay, now you divide. Okay, mummy. So, if I divide 4 by 3, the answer is 1 and 1 is left. I have divided the first number. Now, what should I do now, mummy? Now, the remainder which is left, let's write one digit from the remaining numbers near it. Okay? See, the remainder is 1. The remaining number is 59. So, the first digit of 59 will be written down near 1. Like this. Now look, the number here is 15. Now you have to divide 15 by 3. Come on. Okay, mummy. 3 ones are 3. 3 twos are 6. 3 threes are 9. 3 fours are 12. 3 fives are 15. That's it. So when 15 is divided by 3, the answer came 5 and the remainder is 0. Perfectly done, Vandana. Now repeat the same sequence with the rest of the digits. Now the remainder is 0. Let's write the next number 9 near it. Now you have to divide 9 by 3. Come on. Okay, mummy. 3 ones are 3, 3 twos are 6, 3 threes are 9. So the answer after dividing 9 is 3 and remaining is zero. You are absolutely right, Vandana. Now look, there is no digit left to divide. So this means that the whole number is divided by three and the answer is 153. That means if we divide 459 into three equal parts, one part will have 153. Yes, that means my old bag came for 153 rupees. Yes, Vandana. But mother, how will we know that this answer is correct? Very easy. Multiply 153 by 3 and see if the answer came to 459, then you divided it correctly. Okay, mummy, I'll try and multiply them. 
Three threes are nine. Three fives are fifteen. So at ones place is five, and at tens place is one. So while multiplying, we keep ones digit at its designated place, and we keep the digit at tens place here. It will be written like this: three ones three. After adding the carried over one, the answer is four. Oh yes, mummy. After multiplying one hundred and fifty-three by three, the answer came equal to four fifty-nine. That means I have divided correctly. Yes, Vandana. In exactly the same way, you can divide any big number. All right. It is very easy, mummy. Now I will be able to easily divide any big number. Today we learned. How to divide big numbers? Interesting division problems, Part Five. Today we will learn how large numbers are divided. Vandana's mother has taken a new mobile phone on installments. Now she is trying to find out how much money she will pay for this mobile every month. Mother, what are you calculating? I have taken this mobile in installments, Vandana. So now I am finding out how much money I have to pay every month. What is installment, mummy? When we buy something, sometimes we do not give the full value in the beginning, but we give a few rupees every month for it. This is called buying something on instalment, and the money given every month is called an instalment. Got it. For how many months do you have to pay the instalment? I have to pay the instalment for nine months. And what is the total amount you have to pay? I owe a total of sixteen thousand seven hundred and ninety-four rupees. It means you have to give sixteen thousand seven hundred and ninety-four rupees in nine months, right? This means to find out how much money to pay every month, you have to divide sixteen thousand seven hundred and ninety-four by nine. Perfect, Vandana. I can easily tell you the answer to this, Mom. Okay then, tell me. I will write sixteen thousand seven hundred and ninety-four and nine in this way to divide this. Now I will start dividing by nine. The first digit is one. That will not be divided, so I'll divide sixteen by nine. Nine ones are nine. The remainder left is seven. Let me write down seven. Now I have to divide seventy-seven by nine. Nine eights are seventy-two. I will subtract seventy-two from seventy-seven. Remaining is five. Now let's write this nine down as well, and divide fifty-nine by nine. Nine sixes are fifty-four. Fifty-four was deducted from fifty-nine, and the remaining is five. Let us also write down four. Now the number is fifty-four. Nine sixes are fifty-four. If we deduct fifty-four from fifty-four, the remainder is zero. Now the whole number is divided, and the answer came one thousand eight hundred and sixty-six. Mother, this means you have to pay one thousand eight hundred and sixty-six rupees for nine months. Your answer seems correct, Vandana. Check it one more time and see it. Okay, mummy. To check, I have to multiply one thousand eight hundred and sixty-six by nine. Nine sixes are fifty-four, so four will be written here, and five will be carried over. While multiplying, we will keep this digit at its designated space, and this digit is kept here, and this will be written like this. Nine sixes are fifty-four. Adding fifty-four and five will be fifty-nine. We will keep five and nine at their designated places. Nine eights are seventy-two. 
5 added in 72, then the answer came 77. Similarly, 77 will be written in this way. 9 ones are 9. 7 will be added to it, so 16 will come. The answer is 16,794. Both numbers are equal, which means that I have divided correctly. Absolutely right, Vandana. You did the division right and multiplication as well. Now you have also learned to divide large numbers, right? You only have taught me this, mummy. Today you learned that very large numbers are also divided in the same way as smaller numbers. Now you can easily divide even the biggest numbers. Interesting Division Problems Part 6 Today, we will discuss about a common mistake made during division. Ever since Vandana has learned to divide big numbers, she has been practicing. Today, Vandana is solving a similar question. She is dividing 408 by 4. Let's see if she can solve it correctly or not. We have already learned how to divide 5 digit numbers. This is just a 3 digit number. So solving this will be very easy. Let's solve this now. First of all, I will write 408 and 4 like this. Now we'll start dividing. 4 ones are 4. Remaining is 0. Now write down the next number 0. Hey, this one is also 0. What do I do now? Let me also write down the next number. Write down 8. So now the number becomes 8. Now it's right. I'll divide 8 by 4. If we divide 8 by 4, then the answer will be 2. The remainder will be 0. That means after dividing 408 by 4, the answer will be 12. Division is done. Now we must check this and see if the answer is correct or not. I will multiply 4 by 12 to check if this division is correct or not. 4 twos are 8 and 4 ones are 4. The answer came 48. Oh what? The answer should have come to 408. That means I have made a mistake in dividing. Now I will have to ask mummy for help. Mummy, you know I think I have made a mistake in dividing. Can you please help me with this? Look Vandana, you made a mistake while you were here. Now solve it from here. I will tell you when you made a mistake. Okay, let me write down the zero. Even after writing this number down, the remainder is zero. So let me also write down the next number. Wait Vandana. What happened mummy? Now I understood what were you doing wrong in dividing. Look, when you wrote zero down, you have to think by which number should we multiply four to get the answer as zero. I didn't understand mother. How will we get zero as the answer? Whenever we multiply any number by zero, we get the answer as zero only. In this way, we will here multiply four by zero and we will get the answer as zero. So, the remainder will be zero. Oh, now I understood this. Yes, Vandana. Now complete the division to obtain the correct answer. Now write down eight and divide eight by four. The answer is two. Because 4 multiplied by 2 is 8 and the remainder is 0. This means that 408 divided by 4 is 102. Isn't that right, mother? You check it yourself. Okay, mother. I will multiply 102 by 4. If the answer comes to be 408, then the division is correct. Yes. 
To multiply 102 by 4, I will write it like this. And now I will multiply. The answer came 408. That means I divided it correctly. Today we learned what is the correct way of dividing large numbers 